welcome to the Swift Half, your weekly session of chat from the UK OCR and adventure running scene. Each week, pub landlord Alan and our favourite regular Ian discuss races, runners and anything else that comes to mind. So pull up a pew, pour yourself a drink and join us for the Swift Half. You're listening to the fifth most popular podcast for people who know that OCR is the illegitimate love child of Steeplechase and It's a Knockout. Ian, my friend, welcome to the Swift Half again. How are you? I'm good, Alan. More importantly, how are you? Um, I'm, I'm all fine, yeah. I'm all prepped and ready for this coming weekend, which we'll talk about in a bit. Well, we'll talk about it soon. Um, but I'm absolutely good. My car's um, been in the garage. I now know what's up with it. Is it the driver? <laughs> it's definitely the driver. Um, apparently, I've got an air gap in my left rear sensor. So you're seeing an air gap in my left rear wheel. I don't know what that means. I think it's a dodgy sensor because the it's back to driving normal now. I think it means that the garage is saying something posh to you, so you'll hand them all the money. Yeah, I think it's under warranty, so I'm not I'm not really that bothered about it. But yeah, um, but they won't fix it. I've got to go um, somewhere else to have it fixed. Yeah, they won't fix it, Alan, because you're under warranty. Wait until you're out of warranty. They will fix it. <laughs> you think that's what it is? You're just going to wait until the warranty explains. Yeah, we'll fix it now for you. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't need sorting for the next 24 months, but come back to us on 25th month. We'll, we'll sort it right out if it deteriorates. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good. Um, no, everything's good, mate. I'm, I'm moved. The house is all moved into now. I'm, I'm all decked up. I'm, I'm living. I'm living the life, mate. It's, um, it's all good. No, no worries. Work's good. Everything's good. And the podcast is doing well again. So the podcast is always doing well. I thought I have noticed there's been a lack of me and you on a lot of shows, and the podcast has improved ratings. So I'm not <laughs> sure what that means. <laughs> too right, too right. Did you listen to Who's Hot this week, though? Did you listen to the blooper episode of Who's Hot? Unfortunately, I've been away all this weekend. I, I got back um, late yesterday, listener. I've not listened to any podcast recently, Alan. Ian, you're slacking. You normally listen to like five or six a day. I do, but we literally didn't have enough time, unfortunately. I have heard that the feedback was excellent. <laughs> um, it was a very strange podcast and get a bit of context behind it for anyone who's not listened to it yet Will pops on, does his little hi, I'm Will, the host of Who's Hot um, hi to Becky, hi to Chris and we've got Mark Dixon on and then Will vanishes for an hour just disappears <laughs> Techni- technicalities is computer decided to reboot or go off um, but then it came back on and he was still connected, but he couldn't speak. And yeah, he just the feedback was coming back through his microphone, although no one could hear him. So yeah, so we had a bit of feedback on on it, but um, it was good. It was it was an interesting topic because an interesting podcast because virtually Mark Dixon had forgot, you know, his podcasting bit. So we just went into everything that's happening at Notes and. Threw a couple of little swear words in there, not thinking we'd edit it all out, and I didn't. I just left everything in here because it was just, it was just a good little chat. Yeah, listeners don't realise that a lot of time we talked about this for the Patreon, didn't we? That we could do like bonus episodes of the bits we cut out, and then we realised we don't really cut out that much. <laughs> We don't cut out a lot at all. I think we cut out about five minutes maximum of any podcast. That's all we cut out. We just can't we can't put an episode of five minutes in, um, which is not good. No, we, we can't. So, listener, you are guaranteed to listen to at least some of the funny stuff we say. <laughs> I, I, we haven't said a funny thing in a while. I know, I know we haven't said a funny thing in a while. I was using the royal we. I was including Mark Dixon, Becky and Chris in that. I had a good joke, though, the other day. What do you call a woman with sausage, bacon, and eggs on her head? Is this going to get us cancelled? No, 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 no. You shouldn't do no. They call her calf. God, I might cancel us after that. <laughs> That's a dad joke for you, but Ian, I'm dad joke business. What are you drinking tonight, my friend? I'm on a non-alcoholic beer. I bought this down in London. I don't know if you have it anywhere else, but I'm having a Peroni. 
alcohol free. I, I bought two while I was down there for the hotel room and realized that I didn't have a fridge there. So I drank one that night and it then got to room temperature. So I brought it home. Oh, nice one. Nice one. I, I'm on um, bottled beer as well tonight, but I'm on Bex Blue. And um, as I'm showing Ian, people can't see this, but I'm showing Ian Bex Blue, alcohol free. It's I don't know if it's like yours because yours is 0.0%, isn't it? And I think Bex Blue is 0.05. Yeah, 0.05. They have to say it's 0.05 to basically account for if none of the alcohol is gone. I, I suspect that in the small print of this Peroni, it probably says but it's 0.005 or, or something like that. But the Explode is an interesting one in that I think that was one of the first mainstream alcohol-free beers because it was the only one you could get in pubs for a long time. Yeah. It, when I, when I um, started training, started training heavily, and I was going out with a few guys and that for a few beers, um, I drank Bex bottles so that every now and then, so every like other pint or every other bottle, I could slip in a Bex Blue. Um, and I always peeled the edge off it because they look exactly like a Bex um, or a bottle of Bex, but it just says blue on it, that's all. Yeah, it's hard to tell. And I remember once I'm um, thinking about four of them at a barbecue and scaring the intern's niece who thought I was about to drink and drive, which uh, I'd never do, but it was quite interesting seeing how, how terrified she was. But don't worry, listener, we let her in on the job. We didn't let her think... Um, she was going to meet a sorry end uh, when we drove her home. But, you know, speaking of alcohol-free beer, I was in Tesco today, Alan, and it wasn't a particularly big Tesco, but they had two entire, not aisles, but sections dedicated to alcohol-free. It used to be one shelf, didn't it? And now you've got you know, uh, two lots of the units. I, Tesco's is probably the best selection I've been to Morrison's, and Morrison's have, I think, about three beers in. Um, but you go to Tesco's, and this, you're right, there's, there's absolutely a great choice there. And good prices, I think. I bought 15 bottles of this Bex Blue for nine 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 the other day, which I think is a, a good price. Probably a bit cheaper than buying a Coca-Cola. Oh, this actually. Um, tomorrow, though, Ian, I'm not drinking alcohol free tomorrow. I'm having my first real drink of the month. So the last day of the month, I'm attending the local camera beer festival. Um, I have I've only prom I've promised I'm only stopping for an hour and a half. I'm not stopping for no longer than an hour and a half because I've got to catch a train home. Um, because I can't walk to and from town anymore. I've now got to catch trains. That's bad, isn't it? That's what happens when you move. Sometimes all the little conveniences uh, go away. I am, of course, worried that you are meant to be editing this uh, podcast so listener um happy sunday <laughs> this will be edited well before then i hope and um, before we go let's, let's talk a little bit obviously how then um let's go with the top subject spartan world champs we have got two new spartan world champs this weekend this is great news well we, well, we have more than two new champs but we have two uk champs Sorry, yeah, yeah. The Spartan Age Group World Championships 9 to 11 category, Sophie and Harry Jeffrey um, won. Yay! Well done, Sophie and Harry. No, absolutely well done. And let's be honest, is there any better place to win a Spartan Age Group Championship than Bahamas? No. <laughs> when I saw it, I was thinking, bloody Bahamas. Um, did they go on holiday and just rock up to a Spartan or did they go out for the Spartan? They went out for the Spartan, didn't they? I believe they did. And also a friend of the show, Stuart Jeffrey, dad of um, Sophie and Harry, took um, second place in the sprint. Yeah, absolutely amazing. But why can't we have like championships in the Bahamas? Why do they have to be in Dubai and places like that? Well, we do have championships in Bahamas. You just need to forge your birth certificate, Alan. Do you think I'm get away with being under 16? I reckon. I'm, I'm not sure. Listener, get, get in touch. Do you reckon <laughs> Alan could pass for a under 16 for the Spartan World Champs next year? And there goes Ian passing the book very, very smartly <laughs> over to the listener. <laughs> and I'm getting inundated with now with not a chance. <laughs> I, I, absolutely. But from what I hear, it was a fabulous event. 
yeah, quite a few um, people went over from what we understand. I will say that, you know, Stuart looks a lot in this picture we've got of him. He looks a little bit like our good friend Gary. Yeah, he does actually, doesn't he? I thought that as well when I saw it. <laughs> is that yeah, like, because like, it is? <laughs> I don't think it is, but yeah, he, you know, the last time I saw Stuart, he didn't have a full beard like that. No, no. It's a long time since I've seen Stuart, actually. But yeah, he looks like a cross between Gary and um, and Hammond. Yeah. I, that's Actually, I thought it might have been Hammond when I saw it. Well, you tanked it as um, Stuart Jeffrey, so I'm, I'm just going with that. Yeah, maybe that was because I didn't tag it. So one of our um, friends tagged it. Don't go blaming me for that work. <laughs> that wasn't me. Um, talking we didn't about do any our... hard work. Yeah. <laughs> one of our friends did that for us. Um, talking about um, going abroad and things, what about the solo mothers this week going over to Berlin? Well, apparently we're no longer welcome in Germany. <laughs> Why there must be some story why you're no longer welcome in Germany. I have no idea. It just just Will, um, Steve, and our good friend Danny Lister went to, to Germany. We've got to be banned for something. <laughs> Did you see some of the the, the course looked phenomenal? A double length um, electric eel. The obstacles seem to be like to another level. They did. They went all out for this particular event because it was the first one back in Germany. And I think we will be allowed in Germany, Alan, because we did have Sharon and Leonsky there. I'm sure they were the calming influence because we all know how rowdy Will gets after a pina colada. A pina colada. And I do believe there was a little bit of Jaeger bomb thrown in there. Jaeger with the solos? That never happened. Never, never in a month of Sundays. Never in a month of Sundays. But yeah, the course looked magnificent. It wasn't very muddy from what I saw. No, it didn't look muddy. Um, it, it looked a bit of a cross. I'm going to say the pictures I've seen, a little bit of a cross between a Spartan course, very much um, technical trails and that, some of the pictures I've seen, which is not normally what you get on a Tough Mudder course, is it? No, but again, I, I guess they're just trying something a little bit different. I understand that you didn't need a shower afterwards because it was a relatively clean course. Mm. Um, the thing that come out of it for me, though, Ian, photos. You know, our good friend took some amazing quality photos. Will took some great photos. But then I hear that Tough Mudder are now charging for photos over in Berlin. Yes, this is interesting. And I don't know what to make of it because we don't know what Tough Mudder is going to do over here. Everything goes to a local market. Yeah. So we don't know if this is just a Germany thing or whether they would roll it out over here. We do know that Free Photos has been almost like a trademark of Tough Mudder for many, many, many years. But could next year we see this situation where they charge for photos? It's interesting, and it's an interesting topic. I think the the deal I saw was something like €9 for one or €29.99 for all the photos of you. So a good package, 30 quid if you've got in like 30, 40 photos. I think that's not too bad. Um, if you've only got three photos, it's quite expensive. But for me, having free photos is great marketing. And I, I don't know what the benefit they're going to get out of charging for photos. You know, when, when you look at, you're going to employ a photographer for a day and you're looking at £400, maybe £500 per day. You've got three photo photographers out there one and a half thousand pound. That that one and a half thousand pound is money well spent because if they take ten thousand photos, yeah, in a day, and they'll probably take more than that, ten thousand photos in a day, and they edit them and they put them all out. And you, and no, let's say a bit more than that. You come away with ten thousand photos. That's probably two to three photos of every runner. Every runner that's out there is going to pick that photo and pop it on their Facebook, so they're straight away. You have got 10,000, if not more, Facebook photos showing you with Tough Mudder logo on. That is a good point. I'm going to do a counter-argument here, Alan, because it's been a while since we've had a debate. I'm not arguing that they should charge. I want everything free because yeah. I don't like paying for, for anything. How much additional marketing does Tough Mudder now need? Well, if you know Tough Mudder... So if, if you, me and you know Tough Mudder, yeah? So we're in the OCR world, right? The people who go to Tough Mudder, how many people actually rock up to Tough Mudder and know Tough Mudder? 50%? Well, I imagine anyone who's bought a ticket knows Tough Mudder. 
Yeah, but, but prior to doing that one, how, how many people at every event is going to be their first event or maybe their second one? You're probably right. Probably around about 50% uh, higher in some places, lower in other places. Yeah. So out of that 50%, let's just say, let's we'll, we'll go really low figures. We'll say 4,000 turn up to a Tough Mudder event on a weekend, and that's really low, low ballpark figures I'm going with there. 2,000 of them have never, ever done Tough Mudder before. Yeah. So that's 2,000 people putting a Facebook photo out, yeah, of Tough Mudder, and if they don't know about it, how many of their friends don't know about it? Well, the people who I said were 50%, they obviously know about Tough Mudder because they bought a ticket. Yeah. So if they know about it, how do their friends know about it? It's a circular argument, of course. They would have had to see it. I'm, I'm just thinking, is Tough Mudder and OCR in general role now so in our brains? Because it's been going 10 years. Do they need as many people sharing the pictures? Because oh, here's a question for you. Yeah. Your last Tough Mudder. Yeah. How many of your photos did you share? Zilch. Tough Mudder before that? Probably a few. Four or five. No, in fact, ETM was my last one. So ETM, I shared all my photos. But the Tough Mudder that I did in Manchester with you guys, which was the one before, I, I think I shared maybe two or three because they had Harley in them. If they'd not had Harley in them, I wouldn't have shared them. Um, prior to that, I don't, I don't know, but not, I don't share that many. I just share OCI in general. So what I'm wondering is, if people pay for the photos, yeah, are they more or less likely to share them? Ooh, now that's a good argument. That that is a good argument because if you've purchased something, you're likely to share it, aren't you? You are, because think of the High Rocks model at the moment. High Rocks charge for photos; they make no secret of the fact the price is about the same. Yeah. But you do see High Rocks photos everywhere. But there's a difference in that, Ian. Oh, there is. High Rocks photos are high quality. Like the high Rocks photos remind me of nuclear racers photos. That high quality pictures with, with the filters on, you know, and, and very much like nuclear do that. And I don't know what filter nuclear use, but they seem to put a filter on that gives it that nuclear look. Um Maybe that's what Tough Mudder need to do. If Tough Mudder are going to do that, they need to do something that that makes it really clearly a visible Tough Mudder photo, as opposed to what I see at the moment, which is a normal photo without without a special filter on. If that makes sense, it does. But basically, the photos that you and me can can take with our forms. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the equivalent. I, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to slate the photographers because they do a great job. And they get some great photos. But yeah, you're quite right. I don't see not nothing extra in terms of the photo quality that me and you can do with our phones. Yeah. And we'll clarify that me and you can do with our phones if we're actually as talented as the fine photographers who yeah. do it at Tough Mudder. But yeah, you are right. Does it have that extra pizzazz? And this is on the photographers. Tough Mudder tell them how they want the photos presenting. Yeah. I think if they they could do it and put something, we we know High Rocks put that dark filter on, and what um, Nuclear do and um, it's going to shoot me now because I've actually forgot um, his name. You're going to tell Tony. me, Tony. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't think of his, his name. Then what Tony does? Tony makes the colours stand out when you when you look at a Nuclear, the colours pop. That green colour pops out at you. The 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 reds, the yellows. They pop out at you really, really clearly. That's what, um, for me, Tough Mudder need to do. If they, if they want to get that, that photo, they they need them colours to pop out at you um, or, or, or whatever they do. But it needs to be be better quality than what they currently are. By, by, by better quality, we are, of course, referring to the idea of making it different. So yes. it's not just a, a, a photo because they are of high quality. They get some awesome pauses of everyone. But yeah, I do wonder whether there is that aspect of at the moment, Tough Mudder photos are kind of disposable in a way. Yeah. No, you're quite right. You're quite right. But I mean, also, I was, I was going to say something else before that. Years ago, pre-COVID, when I used to say to someone, I did OCR, the answer was, oh, like Tough Mudder. I'm finding that's no longer the answer. I'm like, oh, like Nuclear Races. Oh, like Overland. Oh, like Wolf Run. Oh, like Nuts. And any it's something else, Total Warrior, Bones Five. Lots of other races out there now. And the other races seem to be not as well known. I'm not going to say they're as well known, 
but they seem to be coming up now. So, yeah, I still get that odd comment. What, like a Tough Mudder? Yeah, it's like a Tough Mudder, but I'm hearing other races named, other brands named in there. That is actually such a good point. For years and years and years, Tough Mudder was like NFL is to American football. It wasn't obstacle racing. It was Tough Mudder. We, again, going back to it at the moment, we have the same thing with High Rocks. People don't call it hybrid racing or fitness racing. They call it, oh, I'm doing a high rocks. Yeah. But many years later, like you say, yeah, people even know it was obstacle racing or they'll say, oh, yeah, I did one of them. I did a wolf run or I did a total warrior. And you make a good point. If I was to do a Nox or a nuclear or a total warrior or even a Yorkshire warrior, I'd probably share those pictures. Yes. So Tough Mudder does have a, a kind of situation at the moment. They're producing pictures that not everyone's sharing. Yeah. How do they get them to share? One would be said, make them unique. Didn't they used to do headband Mondays or something like that? They did to encourage interaction. And to be fair, they recently, I don't know if it's the algorithms on my phone, I don't see an awful lot of tough mudder popping up on Facebook anymore. No, neither do I. Um, but I, I was thinking, headband Monday, give a race away. Every Monday, you give one race away. Take a picture of you with your headband on, post it on social media, tag Tough Mudder. Boom. They used to do that. Everyone used to do it on a Monday. Every Monday after a race. Or they'd also do the Ace Beer shots that they just post the whole album on, didn't they? You know how you could post yeah. pause with your beer? And they'd show them finisher photos. They'd just upload all of them to Facebook which in and of itself is great because what you do is you tag your mates and suddenly it's all over the shop. Yeah. I think the, the, the need to go back, and I know we, when we spoke to Giles a few months ago, um, and if you're not listening to that, listen, go back and have a listen to when we, when we spoke to Giles. And Giles said he was he was taking it back a little bit. Um, to tough and would have been tough and trying to get interaction. And he's actually put, there was a post in one of the Legionnaires, I think today, someone was asking questions about why is the marketing different between Tough Mudder and Spartan? And Giles actually said, because we're going back to making Tough Mudder tough um, and that. We, I, I, great when someone like that can jump on a, a post and, and answer every question. Gives you faith in it. I will say Giles and also Mark do a fabulous job of interacting with community, particularly in the last few uh, weeks, months, a um, couple of years. So well, well done to, to both of them. Can we talk about face of the Tough Mudder season pass? Yay! Dan Lister makes the face of Tough Mudder season pass marketing. He tried to get away with it, but he's finally on the Tough Mudder season pass. Only well, took him 100 Tough Mudders. Only one. Only had to get to 100 to have his face on <laughs> And it's not a great picture. I, I actually had to look twice when I saw he was tagged in it. I'm thinking, is that really Dan? Um, yeah. <laughs> not his best picture. Not his best picture, but it still looks good. Yeah, well done, Dan. Well done, Dan. <laughs> we like it. <laughs> um, staying with racing, Ian, who's hot out this week? We talked a little bit earlier about them. Um, the Nuts rule book is out. So Mark Dixon's posted this on our social media. Very interesting. Um I'm going to go through a few, few things on it. And I don't know if you've had a chance to have a look at it. But the first thing I noticed, so they're going with the banding system again, which is good, multi-band system, um, which is used at nearly, it's, it's now becoming the norm, I think. This multi-band system is now becoming the norm. Male races will start with three bands. Yeah. Now, we all know that female races run exactly the same course. Nuts gone a little bit technical this time. So what they're saying is that female races will start with four bands. I like that, Ian. I like that. I think that's a, a great idea. Um, we want completion rather than failure. And I think this adds a little bit to it. Asking the females to complete all the rigs that they've got um, is a big challenge. Um, so give them an extra band. So big well done to Nuts on that. I want to say I want a great idea um, and that. Can I just ask, can we just clarify which competition within Nuts is this for? Is this just for the um, UK OCR series race? Yes, so this is the UK OCR series race. So this is the one lap, the sprint lap of of nuts. So it's the UK OCR series race, um, and and, it, and it's great. Um, it, it says the maximum number of penalty loops can be completed for qualifying athletes is two for men and three for females. So you've got to finish with at least one band, um, and then you're going to get a, a penalty loop. And I think 
Mark says the penalty loops are about two to three minutes long. So, gosh, so for some of these fast athletes, that seems like what a half a mile, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, between half a mile and three quarters of a mile, um, a penalty loops. Which for a seven k, yeah, a seven k course, which is only four and a half miles anyway. Yeah, it's a big penalty loop. It's a big penalty loop. Um, and a lot of things are one attempt. So, um, we'll, we'll, I'll go through a few of them. So, the low rigs one attempt. Valkyrie's multiple attempt, mid rig is one attempt. Um, the rings are multiple attempts. The small low rigs multiple attempts. The ladders is multiple attempts. The high wheels rig is one attempt. The Taurus high rig rig is one attempt. The piccolo rig. Now I haven't seen this, um, but it says traverse tires using straps, monkey bars, and then the rope traverse um, using attachments only. Plus the first bar of the low section can be used. So I wonder if this is the one that's in the in the centre um, of the village. It may be the one in the centre. I think I know which one you mean. Can I check the four lappers, the three lappers and two lappers? They're still doing the technical section. Yes, I believe so. I believe so. There's nothing on nothing on here about it. No, because I got asked actually an interesting question, Alan. We've got a friend over, as you know. I think we sh- sh- we've shouted him out previously. Um, Nick Bowerman from the, the States. Um, his claim to fame is uh, our good friend James Burton, who was on tour uh, in Florida, went to a savage race and kept poor Nick off the podium. Nick um, came fourth overall, and he would have been third if it wasn't for that pesky James Burton being on holiday. <laughs> so he's got some, um, he's going he's gonna to try and get some payback, is he? Oh, I don't think he'll um, have any payback. He actually said that he was suffering on that race anyway and he didn't deserve a podium. But yeah, <laughs> he, his claim to fame is uh, that a holiday in James Burton kept him off a savage race podium. But he's coming during the four lapper. Right. And he asked me a, a question, which was, why does it take so long to do four laps? Because, of course, you you look at people's times. Because mentally, you think, oh, it's only 20, 28K. Yeah. Which is, I want to say, off the top of my head, what, three quarters of a marathon? Maybe a little bit less than three quarters of a marathon? It's between a half and a... 16, is it 16 mile? Yeah, yeah something, something like that. But yeah, he did 20... 20 8k and he was saying that oh I, i've done a a spartan um beast or the ultra beat whatever it is which is only slightly less you know i've done that in a couple of hours but why is even elite athletes why is it taking them three and a half four four and a half hours what did you tell him i, I told him that the level of competition in, in the uk is just you know nowhere near the no <laughs> did, did i didn't listen no, don't cancel me <laughs> Don't, don't, don't cancel me. Please don't cancel me for that. No, what I I said was, because, yeah, he, he said, I've run a 13.6-mile beast in two hours and run 26 compromised miles in four hours. So, you know, I, I've seen that you know, lots of people have taken a lot longer. I told him that it's a mixture of obstacle density. Yeah, very much so. UK mud is tough. Yeah. Wayne from Nuts is an evil genius. He certainly is. <laughs> and that he shouldn't really compare it to a beast. I think a beast is a bad comparison for a nuts for lapper. I would say that a nuts for lapper is actually like doing a super four times. Yes. And that's exactly what I'd probably put it as. It's, it's four supers. It, there's a lot of water involved. And what people underestimate is that water. Even in summer, they underestimate the water. You know, the, the, the yeah. waves, you, you're in and out of that stream several times you know you're getting completely wet you've eaten out of ditches several times you've got the slide that's back in the slide's back in this time and and on top of that you would then have the technical obstacles when your hands are cold your body's cold you know um it is it's a tough one it's it's to me it is now and i'll put my number it is now the toughest obstacle course race in the uk the winter is the toughest obstacle course race in the uk um before I would have always said tough guy. There is no tough guy now. Um, so to me, the toughest one is nuts in winter. And I know people are going to turn around and say, "Well, about my tough up in Scotland." I haven't done it for a few years, so I, I, I can't comment on that in a minute. But when I did do it, it was tough, but it wasn't as tough as tough guy or nuts, in my opinion. 
And what's going to be interesting this weekend is it promises to be a hot one as well. Yeah, and that makes it even more difficult because when it's hot, you've got the cold water, you're going in the cold water, you're coming out into the heat. You, you don't want to put on a wetsuit, you know, so you're going to go, and you, you'll get away with not putting a wetsuit on, but in the fourth lap, I've seen more and more people who have got, if they haven't got no body fat on them, you know, and, and that to keep them warm, they'll struggle. They will struggle. Am I, am I right in thinking, is it like a six-hour cutoff for nuts? I believe it is. You... I believe it is. I've just looked at the rules on this end as well. It says a multi-lap, in, multi-lap endurance racers will not have a band system. However, previous rules for each penalty obstacle apply, but the penalty for non-completion is 30 burpees for an obstacle instead of a band loss. So all the rules still apply, but you get 30 burpees if you fail. Oh, gosh, and four, four laps. And by six-hour cut-off, I meant six hours to get on your last lap, not six hours yes. to complete. Yeah, two hours a lap. Which is going to be hard. I think it's going to, going to be hard. I can't wait to see how he gets on. And Sadly, I can't make nuts this, uh, this weekend. We were down in London this past weekend. We're doing something um, next weekend, so we have to have a local weekend. But if you do see our friend Nick Bowerman uh, down there with his wife Maddie and their little daughter Tree, tell them hi. Just say that uh, that Ian and Alan from UKOCR says says hi and wish him luck as he tries to complete the four laps. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I would this... love to have gone down. But I'm at Man V Mountain. Where, where you're stopping locally, say, aren't you? I'm stopping local. Um, I think Affex is on this weekend in Liverpool, so I'm going to possibly pop across and get some video. Or yeah, I think that's where I'll, I'll do. I was going to say I might stay at home and do some cleaning. No, I'm yeah. I'm going to Affex in, in <laughs> Liverpool. That, that's I'm not doing chores on a weekend, but yeah. Good luck to Nick and good luck to all the competitors doing doing not. So both the people who are doing the seven k UK OCR series race. And those who are doing the multi lap, it's no joke. No, it's not. Good luck to everyone. Good luck to you all. Um, yes, I can we want to meet you in Van Mee Mountain now? Of course, we can. I was going to say, speaking of good luck, Alan, um, <laughs> good, good luck, and yeah, I can't wait to see how you get on with this. Um, carrying an injury, which is not always a good thing to do a, a 20 plus mile run around Snowden. Um, first thing. It's Snowden Ultra Weekend as well. So we're going to have what, two massive races on Snowden. I thought Snowden Ultra was this past weekend. I thought Sean Murrayweather did well in it. Well, I thought it was this weekend because he's turned around and put the post on the day saying he's down there for this weekend. Oh, you're absolutely right. It was an old picture he put up. He said four da- days to go until Snowden Ultra. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got two big races on Snowden this weekend. It's going to be like um, trying to go up Mount Everest. It probably will, but hopefully with less Sherpas. With less Sherpas. <laughs> or a lot less Sherpa death, shall we say. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about a little, a little bit first, because I got the kit list out the other day, yeah? And I'm a little bit... There's some things I don't get on this, Ian. So they're trying to make it. They've got some, got some mandatory kit list. So I get some of this rucksack, bum bag, or ultra-running pocket vest, running shoes. Um, a bladder or hydration um, bottles, food. Now, this is what it says to me. You must at all times have equivalent to four gels on you. So even when you finish, you've got to have four gels on you. Well, equivalent to four gels. Could you just um, have a packet of wine gums and say every wine gum is equivalent to a gel? Well, I guess you could. <laughs> I, didn't think that. I didn't think of that one, but... It just made me laugh. That you could, so, in theory, if you're going to be out, carry eight gels and then you'll have four left. Um, waterproof jacket with taped seams. That's standard, you know, um, for, for most fell racers. But then they don't go and ask for um, waterproof leggings. And leggings are just as important in your kit bag as a waterproof jacket. Because if your legs get cold, then, you know, they, they sap your body and your energy. Um, a hat or a rat race rag is okay. Of course it is. Does it have to be a rat race buff, or could you use another buff? It says a rat rag. A rat rag is okay. <laughs> um, gloves, survival bag. Um, it, doesn't, it says not blanket. They missed a trick on that one, because they could have put rat race bivy bags, and they haven't put that. They're obviously worried that they'll sail out. They, they want to keep some bivy bags back for the summer sale special. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, a method of payment, i.e. card, cash or Apple Pay. Why have I got to take that? You want to get to um, pit stops and I want like um, some drink. Have I got to pay for my drink at the pit stops? Why have I got to take a card cash machine? We joke about rap race a lot and... Yeah, that, that seems on, on trend. Well, you need to sign up for another race to get your medal for this one. <laughs> hey, maybe. Um, another one is I've got to carry a basic first aid kit, yeah? And it must contain a de- an adhesive dressing, including one at least 10 centimetres by 10 centimetres and paracetamol. Oh, no, that's a weird one to me because if you're allergic to paracetamol, yeah. What is the point in carrying paracetamol? What's the point in carrying a first aid kit? So, I mean, seriously, I, I get I get it. There's no fell race that I've ever entered that you've had to carry a first aid kit. Because unless you're first aid trained, what are you going to do with it? No, that, that's true. Maybe a plaster. But again, I'm not in favour of encouraging anyone to take any forms of painkillers whilst they're doing a competition. No, and I'm not. Um, yeah. hey, Alan, can I just check? This is going up Snowden, yeah? Yes, yeah, Snowden, yeah. That place which is notoriously empty, there's no one there who will be able to call for help. No, no one's going to be able to call for help, and there isn't a train that goes to the top of it either, and a cafe on the top. I feel bad about saying this, but that seems a little bit like overkill. I'm all for health and safety, but rat race, you charge enough for this. Can you not just maybe have medics? at various points in the race. And, and that was my, I mean, that, uh, they don't need them all the time. And, and a lot of things now, they talk about, also a lot of races I'm entering recently, they talk about carrying a mobile phone, but not a smartphone. Did you know this? That if you've got an old analogue phone, you've got a better chance of making a phone call than you have with a smartphone. I heard that, yeah, basically, because the analogue phone's only looking for a phone signal and not for a internet signal yeah it is better um equipped to actually make a phone call and plus if you take a nokia and you get mugged you can batter them um, with your um, nokia 3310 the and, size play of snake. and play snake yes <laughs> the only problem alan is if you dropped your nokia 3310 on the top of snowden it would cause an avalanche <laughs> yeah you need one of them little 82 tens instead of the big 30, 3330s or whatever they were. But those, those things were amazing. I played Snake for like 24 hours and I still had 98% battery. Yeah, yeah, it did, didn't you? The batteries last for days. They, they would literally last a week. I, I, I remember not charging them up from one week to the next. Whatever batteries Nokia put in, they need to put them in like my iPhone. They absolutely do. I do wonder about this encouragement of um, the old forms. Do you reckon the fell races have bought shares in like entertainment exchange or somewhere like that, which is the only place you can buy these forms now? <laughs> that, that, that would be funny. If uh, fell races, so fell race association UK are now own a, a telephone company. And um, while we're talking about kit, Ian, can I quickly go to some new kit that I found? Of course you can. So, Anyone who's into trail running, especially ultra trail running, you need to check out this website. It's called kiwamisports.com, spelled K-I-W-A-M-I sports.com. The French, so this is a French clothing company, and they have put so much thought and ideas into their kit. It's absolutely phenomenal. Now, it's not cheap, but I'm just going to talk about, they've got two items on there that I think are absolutely amazing. So they've got this jacket, the what complete waterproof ga- jacket, tape seams, everything. But it goes over the top of your race vest. So on the top of your, your race vest with all your bottles in, all your rucksack, because you pull it and it expands at the back. So you've got your, your back pack on and that. It also has two pockets on your chest, which are not pockets. They're just zips that open up so you can get to your water bottles. Yeah. Two pockets at the side, which are not really pockets. You slide them open. You can get into the pockets on your race vest. Everything on it, Ian, is so well thought of. It zips up to the top and zips down from the bottom. It also has it, like, on the chest part, instead of, like, so you can have it unzipped, but normally it flaps about a bit. 
So it's got like a little toggle that you can just fasten together, a little press to everything fasten together on elastic. So it still holds it in place. You can run with it open if you're running hot. There's been so much thought to put into this. £291.67 here. But yeah, if we can get 25 more Patreons, then you can have one. <laughs> to share. <laughs> to share. <laughs> Only joking, patrons. That's not so good. No, but this is absolutely, this is an amazing jacket. If only everyone else put this much thought into a, a trail jacket. It does sound like an immense jacket. And like you say, I love the idea that basically your, your race vest is going to be covered because there's nothing worse is there than having a soggy race vest because there's not a lot you can do with it. It starts smelling. I guess you can throw it in the washing machine, but if it's an Innovate one, it will probably shrink. Exactly. No, you, you, you're absolutely right. The Innovate one will definitely. I'm only joking. Um, but no, it, it's so easy that you can pull it out. And when you're running, there's nothing worse than having to start, take your vest off, um, put your waterproof on, put your race vest back on, and things like that. This stops all that time. It's literally pull it out, pop it on over the top. It's got little mitts in the in the um, sleeves, so you don't have to wear separate gloves. Um, it's got everything. It's been really thought out by a proper trail runners. And then the other one is they've got some shorts, the old race poles at the side. So they actually, because I don't know about, you don't use poles, do you? Have you ever run with poles? No, I've nothing against running with, with poles or anyone from Eastern Europe, but I've never <laughs> run with any poles. Okay. <laughs> Good one, Ian. I like that. <laughs> um, a lot of people are now using poles, especially in fell running, ultra fell running. And actually, it does help going up the hills. I've started using them, and they're a little bit of a pain in terms of storage. So I've got them on my race vest. Um, I've put them across the front. I've put them in the back. I've got them under my arms. They're a little bit of a pain. These, This guy, this company, this Kamami Sports, they've actually put it on your shorts. So on your shorts, you've got like a pocket that takes the whole vest on either side. Um, takes the whole pole down either side. Sorry, not vest. Takes the whole pole down either side. Again, absolutely amazing. But they are them tight type of shorts. You know, them, um, Linford Christie type shorts. Not, not for me. Uh, that, that's a shame. I thought, I'd be curious as to running with the poles just stuck there. But all jokes aside, I have heard that one of the big problems with poles is a lot of times, because you'll have them like on the top of your backpack or whatever, you never end up using them because it's just too much of a hassle. So if this doesn't disturb you running, it does sound like a perfect solution. It, uh, uh, there's a video on it on there, and it doesn't look like it disturbs you running because they're that far up your legs. So they're not actually... They're not stuck because they're on your what is it your femur the top the top part your thigh is that your femur muscle I've got that femur I'm the worst person to ask this question but yeah let's go with it <laughs> so yeah so they're on your thigh muscle let's say so they're, they're at the side which you don't bend that that's not bendable so it's not an bendable thing they should so they should stay straight um, as long as they don't bounce out and it doesn't like they do on the pictures I've seen of people running it looks quite good but yeah check them out guys Kiwami Sports. Um, amazing piece of kit. Big thank you to my mate Neil for sending that in um, to me. Well, while we're talking about um, kit and stuff, let's talk a bit about nutrition. Let's talk about a partner of the podcast, uh, Builder Sports. They had their Builder sum Summer Party this past weekend. Oh, did you? You headed down it, yeah? We headed down. We just happened to be in London anyway that weekend. So we extended our stay. We did some of the activities. We didn't do all the activities because we were out late Sunday. And honestly, Alan, I need my beauty sleep. No, uh, I really <laughs> had a day. Hit the big 25. The big 25. <laughs> plus, <laughs> plus five no, more. No, but, <laughs> yeah, plus a little bit more. But yeah, the, the big 20, 25. And you know, I couldn't wake up early on the Monday to go and do a lot of the other things. But they, it was a proper day of it mate they did a a coffee followed by a getting on the line bikes that we have in london and going on a bit of a line bike uh safari type thing where they went around the park which sounded cool they then had a wit workout which unfortunately i tried to get tickets to too late and sadly it was sold out so i couldn't do a a workout i, I know anyone who listens to the show oh, knows shucks. how yeah, no, I was upset how it was about that. 
There was then a, a 5K out track, followed by a bathhouse, which was a combination of saunas and plunge pools, which was a lot of fun. That sounds cool. I like that. And it finished off with, with drinks. Um, unfortunately, I missed most of the drinks because the hotel we were in was about an hour away from where the bathhouse was and where everyone went out for drinks. So we caught the public transport back. So we caught um, the underground back. And then by the time we got back, everyone had started to leave because they'd been drinking for two and a half hours at that point. And we, we were we were quite fresh and it was a school night. But what a, what a party. And you're know Alan. It does sound super fun to do this kind of day. I know we've talked about it in the past, haven't we, doing something at, uh, at Overlord or something yeah. similar. And this kind of meeting up and doing various things, it sounds great. We'd If we were to do one, we'd have to adapt it so the workout would become drinking. The 5K would probably become drinking. That pub crawl. We're going to pub crawl 5K. Pub crawl. The cycling, well, I can't cycle, so maybe we'll replace that with drinking. Drink it, a walking drink, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I think we can do something very similar. I, I'm liking, I'm liking the sound of this more and more. So we're going to do a walking drinking, um, pub crawl drinking, drinking, and just straight up drinking. Yeah, I, I, exactly. And we could get a plunge pool to keep the beers cool. <laughs> ice tubs. We could get, we could get the cold pods. Absolutely, we can get the cold pods, which. Uh, Speaking of which, if you want a cool pod, um, use the code UKHXR to get, I think, 10% off, but I'm never too sure, but go and do that. Uh, All kidding aside, Builder, you knocked it out of the park with your your festival, your summer party. If you weren't there this year, hopefully they'll do it again next year. Try and make sure you're able to go and do it. I'll give a couple of shout-outs to the discounts that we have as people. You might as well well, um, give out the Builder code as well, given we've been talking about Builder. So we have we have the Builder Cold, which is UKHXR. We have also partnered with Mighty Drinks, which is a protein drink. Um, Ice Tub Stroke Cold Pod, um, which is the cold water things. Recover X, Recover X, the portable cupping company. Um, ORS Hydration. Overload Run and Family Yard Jam. There's discount codes on there. And Tough Mudder UK, we have a discount code for that as well. We have a discount code for Tough Mudder UK now. We do, yeah. I think... I don't think it's ours. I think we share quite a few people's actually. In I'm going to click on it now and tell you, but I am sure we share um, Will's and uh, yeah, we'll, we sh- we share Will's 15% off um, TMBA 2023 dash Will. Uh, other discount codes are available. Yes. For some of the other stuff, I presume the codes are either UK OCR or UK HXR. They are, but everyone can find them by going onto our Instagram and logging onto our link tree. And there's a thing on there saying UK OCR discounts. Perfect. So, so log on on that. And oh, Alan. Yes. We're meant to be doing a draw today for the builder. Are we going to do that next week? No, that's tomorrow. Last day of that's the month. That's tomorrow. Yes. Last day of the month. This is Wednesday. In fact, it'll be yesterday for our listeners, not tomorrow for us, but yesterday for our listeners. Oh, please tell me you're going to do this after the camera. After, yeah. <laughs> after the camera tomorrow. So after I've been to the pubs tomorrow. Um, and before I jump on to a chat with British Obstacle Sports to talk about next year's UK OCR series, a bit behind the scenes there for our listeners. Um, yeah, I'm going to do it in between, between all of that, Ian. Oh, this is going to be hilarious, listener. So that will probably go out on our socials. We won't hide it behind a paywall, but... We might need to hide it behind um, something so it doesn't get kicked out of Instagram. Um, you know, it, it might end up with a triple X rating or summer, um, as as Alan swears when he can't figure out how to pull names out of the bowl. Yeah, I pull names out of the bowl. Oh, do I have to get an actual bowl? I was going to use something. I, I was going to, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to use. I'll get a bowl. You, you don't need to use a bowl. You Use what whatever you want, Alan. Uh, we mentioned Builder. Before the party, the lads of Builder had a great time at um, the Strive, which was at Forder's Gym. I saw this. Do you have any results for that? Because this looked quite good. It did. Um, we covered Winter Strive last time. Summer Strive had a lot of the same same events. And in the mixed um, first, we had CrossFit Faber. Um, 
second was the Frizen method, and third was Fizz Factory. I'm fairly sure that Fizz Factory included a good friend of the show, of Charlotte Malone. Oh, yeah. Oh, well done, Charlotte. I'm fairly sure. In the women's first place was My Zone again, defending their title. Second was Forder's uh, Gym Ladies. And third was Peak Performance, so well done to all the ladies. Men's uh, first place was P- Builder, uh, again, defending their title from winter. Second place was Peak Performance. And the third was Forder's Gym, so well done to all them. We don't know all the athletes on all the um teams but we do know uh builder included hunter mcintyre included tom hogan and included our good friend jay fit well there we go the three of the best athletes in the world yeah quite um understandable that they're going to um podium they're gonna do okay aren't they <laughs> yeah talking about podiums yeah the 100 meter age group british national team has been announced and i see podiums galore on this year podiums galore shall i give you some names oh yes please so all these people have been um, chosen to represent the UK, the British Obstacle Sports Age Group National Team. Miria Burton, Harry Jeffrey, Lauren McArthur, Amelia Solomon, Oliver Addy, Charisma Bas- Baskefield, Emily Carmen, Hollis Lansford, Jack Andrews, Alex Arnold, Laura Haywood, Sandy Powell, Dean Cheatham, Ian Solomon, James Burton, Robert Border and Tony Leary. Um, some good names there, some good new names as well. Yeah, there was a few names which you were saying. I said, thinking, I've not heard them on a podcast recently. No. Is Dean Cheaton the um, Ninja Warrior guy? Wasn't Isn't that Ninja Warrior guy as well? I think Dean is far. And this is what Becky was saying, wasn't she, um, not long ago when she was talking about how the ninja aspect on Will's uh, interview. Will's getting everywhere, isn't he? But on Will's interview with, with Boss... Um, he was talking, she was talking about how ninjas have been more tempted to do the short course form. Very much so. Very much so. Um, loved it. Um, it's great news that we've got new people coming in. So, yeah. A bit more kit news for you as well. Innovate Socks here. Did you get your order in for Innovate Socks? Five pound a pair. Mine came today. Yours came today? Yeah. Did you not get none? You didn't see my post, did you? I didn't see your post, no. I, I didn't Two see your post. Two pair of Innovate on. Socks for five pound off Innovate. It was the deal of the weekend. Have you washed them yet? No, no. I've actually bought three sizes too big. <laughs> <laughs> we're sorry, we're sorry, innovate. But whilst your your kit keeps shrinking, we'll keep cracking jokes. We will, we will. And um, what races we've we got coming this weekend, apart from Man V Mountain and Nuts? Have we got anything else? We do. We have Wolf Run uh, this weekend, which because you're at Man versus Mountain, it means someone else is going to have a chance, Alan. Yes, that's it. Get down there, have a chance of winning because I'm not turning up. <laughs> Absolutely. You've never mentioned that on the podcast ever. Never men- never told anyone that I've won. Did I tell you I've won? Have I told anyone? No, uh, we, we'll have to. We've not got time for this week. We'll have to put it onto another week's episode sometime. Like you mentioned, we've got Summer Notes. We've also got the Goodwood Inflatable 5K. Yeah. And I mentioned earlier, but Affex is also this weekend in Liverpool, which is a fitness event which is a lovely segue this week on the podcast. Um, so go back and listen. We actually had Mark Morgan from Affex on talking all about that race. Next week, we've got Gus, who you know as the man with a moustache, who's the MC at Irox. So he's out um, next Wednesday. So definitely make sure you listen to Fitness Racing Podcast for those two episodes. Uh, further down the road, Alan, um, September the 17th, we've got McTuff. Liking it, yeah. I, I pop that pop that on because I know it's um, Scotland. Up in Scotland, we don't get that many races up there at the minute. So good on McTuff putting one out. They're calling this the muddy one. So expect mud, guys, I guess. I expect mud. And it'll be interesting because a week before that, you've got Tough Mud and Northwest, which is also traditionally a muddy one. So yeah. I wonder which will have most mud. And is Diablo challenged the Farm Scrambler that weekend on the 17th as well, I believe? I believe so. Um, our good friend Shell Carney shared it the other time. While I'm looking up that, do you want to talk about what's happening on October 1st? Yep, so October 1st, down in Hastings. Rick Burgess, our good friend, is putting on Code Breaker down at Raw Fit. This went down a storm last time. It's an event with a bit of a difference, and it's in aid of charity. Get down. If you're down that way, you are free on October the 1st. Get yourself down there. Um it's, it's 
not expensive. It's it's very, very reasonable and you will have so much fun doing it. So make sure you do that and make sure if you're not doing Tough Mudder London, have a look at Diablo, which is on the 23rd of September. So it's the week after um, McTuff. Uh, so you could have, yeah, if you play your cards right, you could do, do a lot of visiting the country here. You could do Nutsund, Wolf Run this, this coming weekend, then Tough Mudder Northwest, then head over to Diablo. I'm oh, sorry, head up uh, north to McTorf and then come down, do Diablo. Sounds like an holiday. It really, really does, Alan. And unfortunately, I don't have any holiday days left. Neither me. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, who have you got? You told you told you got Gus on this weekend because I've already edited it because it's already out for patrons and it's an actually great episode. So quite enjoyed it. He really is good, isn't he? It is, yeah, yeah. And he's not just someone who can talk into a microphone. No, he's really, really good. It, it was a pleasure to actually edit. It was one of them, you, you have a lot of good guests on, um, you know, and I don't get to listen to them all the way through, but I actually went back after I'd, I'd edited it and listened to it all the way through at normal's pace and good good podcast. Well done. Well done. Well, Alan, thank you for that. Who have you got coming next Monday? I have got Matt Roberts talking about fasting and eating and nutrition um, he is helping me to lose weight and yeah, is in the three weeks, I recorded this about three weeks ago and in the three weeks I am down not far off a stone. Well, that, that is super, super impressive. So definitely have a listen to, to that. Um, I thought, are you sure it was three weeks? Yeah, it was three weeks ago, wasn't it? Yeah, three weeks ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It might be coming to four next Monday. So it might be coming to the fourth next next week. But yeah, well, as we're as we're recording this, it was three weeks ago, and you've lost uh, almost a stone. Almost a stone, yeah. I'm I'm doing well, and it's not one of these diets that you have to really cut down on your food. So and he doesn't talk about just dieting; he talks about food in general, and that's what I've done. I've changed what I'm eating, so not the amount I'm eating, but what I am eating. Can't wait to listen to that. I am back from my holly bobs, as we we're saying, so I'm going to have time to listen to that on on Monday. Or maybe I should join Patreon and listen to it early. <laughs> I need to give the Patreon login, don't I? I can't have you joining Patreon and paying for your own. <laughs> we could. We could. There's no harm, harm in it. Yeah, you know, we we I, I wanna wanna win that builder tub, so I'm, I might do it before uh, if I remember. Right. And on that listener, I'm gonna say it's a goodbye from me. Andy, and thank you for joining me once again. To all your listeners, thank you for listening. Please join our Patreons. Please follow us uh, on everything else. You take care. You stay safe. Keep on running. Love you all. Bye.